Welcome to the instructional video for carotid ultrasound for emergency doctors to predict fluid responsiveness. Ensure the following setup. Use the linear probe, the vascular preset and seat your model at 45 degrees. Let's locate the common carotid artery. Place the probe transversely in the carotid triangle. The laterally located internal jugular vein is compressible with pressure and distends with valsalva, whereas the common carotid does not. Rotate the probe 90 degrees such that the probe marker faces the head of the patient. On the screen you will see the longitudinal view of the common carotid artery. Slide the probe cephalid until you see the carotid bulb. On this two dimensional image it is important to measure the widest diameter. Ensure this is through the middle of the vessel and is in systole. Measurements are done at a distance no greater than one centimetre from the proximal end of the carotid bulb. There is a simple way to estimate one centimetre. This will be detailed later. The thin white lining of the vessel is the endothelium. The first step is to measure the internal diameter of the vessel. Once a good 2D image of the artery near the bulb is obtained, freeze the image. Now scroll through the frames using the wheel until the systolic frame, which is also the widest diameter, is identified. All measurements are done in this diameter. Now hit the calc button to open the calculations for the vascular setting. Calipers will appear on the screen. Use the select key to toggle between the two ends and precisely place the caliper on the endothelium. Use the scale on screen and your finger to estimate one centimetre. Hit the save calc key to store the diameter. Time to play with colour and Doppler. Coming back to our good 2D image, adjust your depth and gain. Press the colour key. Place the box in the area of interest at a preset angle of plus 20. Measurements are easier if the carotid bulb is higher on screen than the rest of the vessel. Hit the Doppler key. Angle of Doppler steer is preset to 60 degrees. Adjust your image such that the lumen of the vessel and line of Doppler are parallel. Adjust the Doppler gate size to match the endothelial diameter. Hit the Doppler key again to get a trace of at least three pulse cycles. Now freeze the image and press the calc button. Choose the tap option to bring up the linear calipers on the screen. Using the select key to toggle between the two ends of the calipers, place them on identical spots three cycles apart. Hit the set button for the machine to calculate flow. The flow in millilitres per minute appears on the screen. For this project, the absolute value is less important than the variation that occurs with positional Hit Save Calc. The following is an optional shortcut. Earlier we measured vessel diameter manually. Optionally you may skip this step provided you adjust the Doppler gate precisely to the endothelial diameter. The gate size will be calculated as the diameter. It is recommended that the diameter be measured manually as shown earlier for improved accuracy. Now we perform the passive leg raise. Using the electronic reclining beds or manually using an assistant, lower the head end of the bed so that the subject is supine. Then fold the legs so that they are 45 degrees. Now we repeat the measurement process in this position. This should be done within two minutes. Take note of any change in the subject's blood flow in this new position. An increase in carotid blood flow of 15% or more with passive leg raise is considered a positive prediction for fluid responsiveness. Thank you for watching this video.